when it's all said and done, was this the Eagles putting the foot down or was it really many just uh, giving it to them with all those turnovers? I think it was a bit of a combination of both. I mean, the Eagles did do some great things, specifically in the run game. But the reality is, in this league, you cannot fumble the ball four times in the same game, lose all four of them. And it was just strange. Like, you watch here, Powell, like, there's no regard. Even when he's running open field, look at the ball. It's all over the place. He never tucks it. To me, this is has something to do with coaching. Again, this is on the way down. Every week, Jay, we would watch every fumble in the NFL that happened. And our coaches would sit there and say, do not do this. Don't go to reach the ball on the goal line unless it's fourth down. Make sure if you're on your way down, they're going to be punching at the ball. So I know these look like you know, great football plays, and I'm not trying to take anything away from the Eagles. But I promise you, they go over this stuff in film every single week. Ball security. And the Vikings come out and just give it away against a team as talented as the Eagles. It's hard to fathom. And then, I mean, last week losing to the box that's truly disappointing because the Vikings, I think everyone would agree, talent-wise, have yes. more talent than the Bucs. But are, are we really hitting the panic button yet on the Vikings? Because as Al Michaels and Kirk Herbstreit pointed out, this team was actually fighting right until, in fact, they looked better at the end than yes. they did for most of the game. I'm not hitting it yet. 0-2 is a tough spot to be in. But if you look at this division, the Bears are not a strong team. Right. That's pretty obvious at this point. You fast forward, I think there's a lot of question marks about the Packers. Specifically, they got a young, lot of young guys playing. And then the next thing I would say would be, you know, the Lions, I would say, are in the driver's seat, but are they the team you know, everyone thinks they are. We'll as find out this as we all know, I have not jumped on that bandwagon <laughs> yet. So I don't think I'm hitting the panic button yet if I am the, you know, the Vikings, although they do need to get in the win column here soon. And then we, you talk about the Eagles. They make the Super Bowl last year. They are 2-0. and Wins are wins, right? That's the bottom line. But you were pretty disappointed with this team at the end of this football game and with Nick Sirianni. I was just because you look at this roster and it's wildly talented. Yeah. And when you rush in this league for 200 and I think it was 54 yards going into the onside kick at the end of the month, I think they added a few more. You should be smoking teams. And there are some great things. You know, you look at this D-line, they were monsters in that. You see sweat here just causing problems. The run game for Minnesota was non-existent. The big boys inside were handling everything. But on the flip side, Kirk Cousins, I think, threw for 360, and everyone was getting in on the action you know obviously Justin Jefferson was the main guy but you look here KJ Osborne had a couple yards Hawkinson had some and the reality is there was a lot of breakdown in the secondary for the Eagles yeah offensively this run game was dominant wow. I mean Swift looked incredible he looked dynamic he was shifty you know and you got to give tip your hat to the O-line they were moving boys up front which is a big ordeal in this league it's hard to do but the pass game had a couple big plays which seemed to made the numbers look better but was it a fluid pass game? A.J. Brown wasn't very, really involved. You saw him upset on the you know, sideline. There was a yeah. bad pick. So they're 2-0. Be very happy if you're an Eagles fan, but there's still a lot of things they can get better at. We have a fascinating Sunday nighter coming up, and you're going to join me uh, after the game to talk about it. Let's talk about it now. You've got the AFC East matchup. Now that the AFC East has just been blown up with this Aaron Rodgers injury, yep. two in the Finns coming off a massive win over the Chargers. The Patriots came back against the Eagles. What are you thinking for this one? I think it's going to be very tight. You know, you look at this line, it's three points, and I think it's, it's very accurate because to me, with Mac Jones, the way he played last week, the, the Dolphins defense did not play that stout. This could be one of those games where Bill Belichick gets his fingerprint, maybe finds something out about Tua, slows this <laughs> offense down a little bit, is the first guy to take Tyreek Hill out of the game and see how the Dolphins react. See if we get Waddle involved a little more this time. 100%. Right? Miami, a three-point favorite on the road. Uh, just the third time since 2011 <laughs> that they've been favored against the Patriots for obvious reasons, of course, after the game. As I mentioned, Luke will be with us. You can join us for that, and you can join us for every primetime NFL game this season.